Welcome to the IETF 112 NetMod session. I'm Lou Berger. I'm uh, here with my co-chair, uh, Kent Watson. Uh, we also have a third co-chair, uh, who I think may be trying to join. Um, the material for that we'll be going over today is all uploaded on Data Tracker, and we are using um, the note-taking tool uh, which today I think is called uh, HedgeDoc. Uh, it'll change tomorrow, but uh, we're using the note taker tool. The link is here. It's also in the chat session. We ask everyone to please jump on uh, and help us capture everything that's said during discussion time. We don't have to capture um, uh, what the presenter is saying. That's on the slides. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, uh, we're well into the IETF this week, so I think folks will be fairly familiar with our note well. We have a set of documents, BCPs, that govern how we uh, interact, how we operate. Uh, that covers um, both uh, technology disclosures, patents, IPR, uh, as well as code of conduct. Um, please keep in mind that everything we say and do here becomes part of our public record. We are uh, recording this session, and those, uh, this session will be avail made available uh, via YouTube as well as other um, IETF means. One of these um, BCPs is our um, conduct guidelines, it's BCP 54. We've been asked by our leadership to highlight this, and uh, you know th this has always been there, uh, BCP 54, but. There's been some recent discussions, and we think it's, uh, we think, they think it's very important to ensure that we keep our um, interactions very respectful and courteous and collegiate. Uh, you know, we, uh, and um, even if we're having heated discussions, which is also just fine to have uh, uh, discussions which you are maybe a little passionate about, but please keep it technical and uh, always respectful. Uh, we're using BDAC. Oh, um, if you are listening, you you have found us. Um, and as I mentioned, we're going to uh, make a video recording of this, so you might be seeing this on video. The note taking we've mentioned before is the collaborative. Uh, I've seen uh, one person join since I asked uh, others to join. Uh, we have. Uh, please take a look and click on the chat button. Go to the top and click on the. Um, the note taking page and, and help us capture the discussion. It's really important that we um, capture actions and, and, and the good discussion. Just quickly add um, also the link at the very top of the Meet Echo window, the fourth icon from the left on the on the top uh, right corner is uh, takes you to the note taking tool as well. Thank you. And that was Kent for those of you that don't know. The agenda is basically as published. We've had some, I think we had a speaker update and some versions update, uh, but the, the, the agenda is largely unchanged. Um, again, all the material is posted. We think the session is going to run so tight that we're not gonna get to the last um, uh, slot. This slot is actually coming to us from uh, a CCAMP document. And I think the main question really there was, which working group does this belong in? And generally, uh, we follow the, the practice in NetMod as if there is another working group that has expertise on the material being covered uh, by the model, it should be done in that working group. So we would expect this to continue and see this work to continue in CCAMP um, as, uh, as is indicated by the draft name. We have not had any uh, RFCs published since the last time we met, um, but we do have some items in the RFC editor queue. Uh, I don't think there was anything particularly noteworthy there to talk about. I'll defer to Kent if he wants to jump in with anything, but I don't think there was anything really not noteworthy there. Um, the post last call documents, we have uh, a couple that are expired. The authors are uh, have committed to doing the updates, so these aren't dead, even though they're expired. So we'll we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, we do have one document that was returned to the working group. Um, basically, there was some uh, alignment necessary to reference documents. The action for that sits with the authors, and we really are hoping that the authors um, uh, take initiative there. 
if they don't, if there's others who wish to, um, uh, to help out, I would suggest that they contact the authors as well as CC the NetMod chairs and we can, we can discuss that. We have several uh, documents um, not on the agenda. Um, no tags has, um, hasn't been modified in a while. There has been an update on the list a couple of times. Uh, so we're really looking um, for an update there. The next one, the, the BIS, uh, we, there was some recent good discussion about whether to take that to um, a last call as is or wait for addition, additional changes. Uh, we, we think that it would be um, fine to move this forward if there isn't something immediate that would that has been identified by the working group that should be added. So please take a look at this document. If you think you have something you want to add to it, please uh, propose it on the list. If we don't see anything, probably sometime in December, we'll take it to last call. Um, versioning requirements, uh, that document is pretty well uh, uh, complete. We're just waiting for the other versioning work to, uh, to advance it. Um, we haven't had any recent incoming uh, or outgoing liaisons proposed. If uh, you think you have one that is important, please let us know. Um, and the best way to do that is on the list. Um, you know, that's sort of the first point here is utilize the list. That's where we do consensus. These discussions are good. The interims are good. They're very important for helping us make progress. Uh, but decision making happens on, on the list. This is particularly important when you have a, uh, to keep in mind when you have an active set of authors that are actively discussing a, a, a changes. Um, they may do agree to a set of a changes, but if it's a working group document, the acceptance of those changes is governed by the working group, not the authors. So you know, those, that it's great to have that progress, but the, this, the discussion has to be reflected on the list and we have to get buy-in from the working group there. Uh, we continue to support and offer um, informal meetings that we can, uh, the, ch the chairs can support uh, that through scheduling working group web access. We also can have virtual interims like we did uh, last month. And all that takes again is a request to the uh, authors, um, uh, or sorry, request from uh, to the, uh, um, the the chairs. Um, with that, we're going to move to the next presentation. I believe that's Balage. Balage, um, up on the top, there should be a share preloaded slide button. If you could click that, you should be able to find your shot your slides and and present. Okay. I think you were down at the bottom, listed as zero two. I don't know. We, we, we can't reorder, but they're numbered. They are numbered. Yes. My screen says a new deck is being shared, but I don't. Oh, there it is. Here we go. Great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we see it. Let's go. So, hello, everyone. Balaj Lengel. I'm speaking on behalf of the active authors of the network network versioning group uh, on the versioning agenda i will present a short overview of what we are doing and then we'll put more time for into what's happening into yank packages we are still having weekly meetings and uh, which are open to everyone. There are quite a good participation for multiple companies. And if you're interested, then yeah, you are also welcome. What we are uh, doing these days is we have the first two drafts, the module versioning and the Yang Samber drafts. We try to finish that and uh, push them to work group last call. Uh, so, and then we are beside this, we are also working on the package drafts, a package draft. There are a number of open issues. We have an issue tracker on the ITF website. We are trying to close that. And then we solve all the issues. So what updates we have been doing? We had 
are at dash 05 at this point uh, that was released last days for the module versioning basically it's editorial updates and adding a few uh, small statements correcting uh, some of the uh, examples and so that not, not nothing new major, uh, major com uh, functional happened here for the stemware, this which defines our versioning uh, and uh, labeling method, we have a bit more work. We had the full reviews by the authors, corrected everything we found. Uh, we defined how this is usable for submodules. The text previously only re referred to modules. We changed the prefix to make it shorter and, and unique. Uh, in the uh, in our Yang module, and then there were a number of editorial changes. Uh, yeah. For submodules, the basic statement is that they can this they can be versioned using uh, Yang semantic versioning. If you change the uh, the submodule and you change the uh, semantic versioning of the submodule. Then you also have to change the modules uh, semantic version, similar as what we have with revision information dates. So if you change the submodule, then that means the module is also changed. Next steps: what we are still working on. We have the tracker for the first two modules, module versioning and sem um, semantic versioning. The issues are closed we found really we found a solution for every of those issues and the authors believe that the, these two first drafts are ready for workgroup last call so we call on the chairs to decide please and we are focusing on the packages draft without the, all the a number of issues and number of people are contributing text and we'll have a bit more uh, presentation on what is happening there. And with that, I'm open to questions or I would uh, hand over to my colleagues to speak about what's happening in packages. That's Not a I question, think. but a comment. Um, just as a recap, the, uh, the plan for the working group is that we will take uh, these first few um, drafts to working group last call, but then uh, the chairs will hold them uh, within the working group until the entire set, all five drafts, are last called, at, at which point we'll take them uh, to the I, I, ISG. Yes. And besides the meeting, as the chair said, we we try to get all uh, issues also to the mailing list, and we I hope we did it correctly. I see that Bo has a question or a comment. Go ahead, Bo. Oh, I I don't have uh, comments on this. I'm just preparing for the next. I think she's just the next speaker. Well, with that, maybe move on to the next presentation. Thank you. But are you able to share your own slides? Uh, I'm trying. OK, yeah, uh, I see a new desk. Share. Perfect. Here you go. Uh, can, can you see? But right now, same. So see them. Can I? Yeah, it's good. Uh, Hello everyone, this is Bo Wu. And uh, as just Blash mentioned, I'm going to present uh, Young Packages draft status on behalf of all the authors and, and the, the, the versioning net mode versioning team. Uh, uh, since last revision, uh, we we don't do very uh, major uh, changes, but we, re uh, we we try to uh, remove the package 
uh, checksum definition since uh, mod module versioning draft has uh, removed all the module versioning uh, module uh, checksum and packages draft needs to keep consistent with uh, all these checksum issues. So that's uh, the only changes we, we do to this uh, revision. Uh, regarding all the other uh, open issues right now, um, we still have uh, 20 open issues. And Blush also mentioned that uh, all these issues, uh, most issues has been assigned owners. So the uh, contributors and working on that and to move it forward. And here uh, we list uh, three issues uh, where uh, in the we are under discussion in the weekly meeting and <clears throat> I'll, I'll, uh, took it each on this and about uh, issue 65 uh, this is a quite typical one that uh, in in the open issues that we need to refine the text and since young versioning drafts has been stable and so this draft need to be uh, made the changes. This one is the uh, <clears throat> uh, previous version, young packages uh, definition, just to use uh, same word label, but uh, uh, we don't have a uh, similar label scheme. So in, in so right now we are, uh, Blush are working on this and to, uh, to, to propose a text on it. And about uh, uh, some new function of these young packages uh, is, a, is scheme amount. <clears throat> right now uh, in, the, in this revision, young packages doesn't define uh, scheme amount uh, functions. Um, so the question is, uh, the authors uh, think the packages can contain modules with module points. Uh, so uh, packages can give some constraints on the uh, mount point. So for example, uh, for ITF uh, basic uh, package, uh, it may, may mount uh, layer two VPN or layer three VPN packages. So uh, for young packages, then in the uh, on the mount mod mount points, we can list uh, some constraints whether uh, maybe only layer three VPN needs uh, is allowable uh, package. So. <clears throat> To this uh, issue, we, 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 we think we will update to include the mount point information and define some constraints for mounted schema. Here we list some rules on this, like uh, some package, package X can constraints the uh, instance of mount point to constraints to restrict only layer two VPN or layer three VPN to be mounted. And schema mounts uh, listed in packet is can be override of mounts in the included package. And the rule uh, number three will be a list of allowable packages. Uh, must include all allowable packages from included packages. Uh, these rules are uh, uh, initial uh, text we are uh, proposing to add to young packages in the next revision. And one major issue is that uh, Right now, young packages also define uh, a module list. But Yan uh, proposed this issue that he, he, he has some concerns on uh, 
there are already four mechanisms standardized by IETF. Uh, uh, there are hello message, uh, netconf monitoring, uh, young library, <clears throat> Uh, 7950 um, mandates in uh, 101, 1.1 is that young library is mandatory. And uh, so module list is already there. And also we have uh, 8342 NMDA young library. So Young package will be the fifth mechanism to list the set of modules. And so uh, right now, Yen is working on this to try to propose some way to remove this duplication. So right now, the team are working on this issue, so, uh, but we need to further discuss in the weekly meeting and then uh, when it when the authors think uh, it's ready, then we'll bring back to the working group for further discussion. So that's almost uh, the status and progress we made and, and also the key issues. So next step, uh, they all, the team are working on the open issues and try to uh, move make more progress on this. So that's the end of my presentation. Thanks. Any questions and comments? Uh, thank you for the uh, hard work and um, progress update. As a reminder to the working group, uh, anyone is welcome to participate in it. It's a working group activity. It's not an author's activity. Um, so yes. it's, it's, uh, it's open to all. Um, and uh, if you could just um, uh, try to repost or post what you think weekly uh, issues that are going to be discussed, um, uh, that'll help to, uh, identify, uh, help people to identify when they should show up to these meetings. Um, it's it's a request. It's not a you know. It, it, if you don't do it, we can live with it. But it'd be nice just to give warning of what issues um, you're going to talk, talk about each week, just so that um, if someone's interested in a particular issue, they can show. Uh, thank you for the the, the work, and also uh, thank you both for uh, ending early and keeping us on schedule. Indeed, thank you. And uh, next presentation is Kupang. And if you're able to share your own slides, that'd be wonderful. Can you see my slides? Yes. OK. So hello, everyone. Uh, this is Chiu Fang. On behalf of the authors and contributors, I would like to give a presentation about system-defined configuration. Uh, as you can see, it's a zero, zero version draft, but not really a new work. Uh, actually, it has already been presented in NetConf and NetMode working groups for two times. And in last uh, ITF meeting, it inspired a lot of good discussion. So thank you, Jason, Blash, Rob, and uh, Kent for your valuable comments. And also, uh, there was a lot of discussion on the mailing list. Uh, it's more than uh, 40, number, uh, 40 number of messages. And about one month ago, a two-hour net mode inter-meeting was held on this work. It's about 15 participants, and I believe that we have reached a lot of agreement with the objectives, scope, and solution on this work. So a new draft has been proposed to document the outcome in the interim meeting. So the authors tried to rewrite the previous NetConf with system draft and resubmit it as a NetMode individual draft based on chair suggestion. So uh, yeah, so regarding the motivation and goal, 
uh, there are four points which are actually aligned with the objectives discussed in the interim meeting, if you can still remember that. The visibility means that we want to enable a server to better document the system configuration and convenient because it is often the cases that the client want to the clients want to reference a system configuration which is not visible in running and we want to avoid at least to reduce having to copy the entire contents of system configuration into running when possible uh, configurable is a capability of capability of being configured there may be a desire for clients to configure descendant nodes of system defined configuration and last one is the client control we want the client to have control over the configuration which means a readback of running should contain only what was explicitly set by the clients and uh, it was as it was discussed during the interim meeting. The complete solutions con consists of two parts. There is a mandatory with system parameter, which is used to retrieve running and system configuration combined. Uh, currently, this parameter is defined as an empty type, but we can discuss whether enumerated values are needed. For example to control whether to return all the system configuration or only system configuration which are referenced. And both netconf get and get config operation and the restconf get and the head methods are updated to support this parameter. And the second part is that we can also have an option system data store, which is read only for clients uh, but its content may change dynamically and our intention is to have no impact to operational that is to say those present in operational with origin equals system will still be as always this work doesn't uh, change that behavior and system defines those are non-deletable but we do have some system configuration which are modifiable a client could define a new value in running which will overwrite that in system and it may also be possible for a client to configure a descendant node of system defined list entry and the more results will flow into intended so system may be overwritten or extended by running to create intended so here gives a simple example of configuring a, a descendant nodes of a system defined node. In this example, suppose system provides a loopback interface configuration with a name and two IP addresses. And step step one and step two show that the configuration, what the configuration looks like in system and operational respectively. And in step three, the client tries to configure a description node, which is a descendant node of system defined interface list node. And after that, the configuration of loopback zero showing in operational includes the name, description, and two IP addresses. And the origin value of those explicitly configured in running is intended. Otherwise, it equals system. Uh, I saw Jason in the queue. So, do you like to would like to say something about this? Go ahead, Jason. Jason? Uh, Jason, I think you should just continue. Jason might be having issues with his microphone. Yeah, okay. So, uh, there are. Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Uh, my apologies. I, I unmuted my own mic, but not in me echo. Are you guys hearing me? Yeah. Okay. I, I guess my question was about step four. Um, and maybe this is still a, a point we're debating in the draft, but would the origin there not be running instead of intended? 
uh, I believe that there is no running, a, a, a value named running in origin is only intended, which means flow from running data store. Okay. Okay, yeah. I may be misremembering the uh, the NMDA uh, origin then. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So uh, there are some open issues. Some of them may have already been discussed during the interim, and others may not. Uh, first, there is a very fundamental question whether we want running always be valid. I know that both uh, 7950 and 18342 define that running must always be a valid configuration data tree. And I also know that there may be a concern that if we allow running to be invalid, then comes the issue of backward compatibility. Uh, the offline validation for legacy client will break unless all the reference system configuration is copied into running. But there is also another view that if we allow the reference system object not in running for then for offline for online validation, the server can just accept the system configuration that the validation passes. And for offline validation, there are three ways. First one is that the client can offline merge running into system, but it necessitates client to be able to access system data store. Uh, it's easily achieved for MDA clients, but no solution for non-MDA clients. The second way is that clients explicitly copy and paste reference system configuration into running. And we know that copy and paste must already be done when configuring descendant nodes. As I mentioned before, the client wants to configure a description node for a loopback. The interface list node with a key name is indeed uh, is needed to copy and paste. But the question is, must it be done for leaf reference too? And the last way is that the clients use a with system parameter to get a merged view and then validate against that merged view. But uh, it's debatable that if it's a real, a really offline validation because the server must be online to respond that request. And there are other open issues, something like, should we define an immutable flag, which is used to indicate to the clients which system configuration is read only or which is not? The server will return an error if the clients attempt to configure a value for a read-only system configuration. But what if configuring one with the same value as found in system uh, is more like a copy and paste in this case, but should we allow it? And whether it's sufficient for this immutable flag to be carried only when the, the, the clients retrieve running with, with system parameter. Uh, the, the next issue is that uh, should the with, with origin parameter be supported for intended, the server must remember whether a specific data node in intended comes from system or running. But my question is, should we expose this origin information to the clients? And should the origin ecosystem be required for system configuration copied and pasted into running. Currently, it's more like a, an explicit with default basic mode. Any default data nodes explicitly set by a client will no longer be treated as a default data even with the same value. But or with origin equal to intended seems more like an overwrite rather than copy and paste. Yeah, go ahead, Jason, please. Hi, guys. Uh, just making sure you're hearing me again. Hello? Thank you. Jason, you'll see that the mic goes up and down. Uh, you should okay. just don't, don't wait for acknowledgement, please. OK. Um, so the um, for the last bullet here, um, I, I would I'd propose that if 
if uh, if like an interface has been defined purely by system, then the origin should say system. But if if the um, user or client has explicitly declared that interface in the running config, then I think that should be reflected as a different origin somehow. So either intended or or some other what, whatever the same origin is for explicitly defined config to show that that's been kind of you know explicitly entered into the running configuration and because we're kind of taking the stance that, that overrides and takes precedence over um, the system configuration. Um, and that the, my second um, comment, which is kind of related to the, the origin is um, I mentioned, I guess I asked earlier in the example where the origin should be shown as intended. Um, I checked NMDA and you're, you're right, it doesn't seem to be a running, but it, there's gonna be a little bit of confusion, I think, because system merges into intended. So when we give an origin of intended, um, it's it could it could be a little ambiguous as to whether that actually came from system or from running. I mean, I know we have an origin of system, but anyway, we may want to have some more discussion about about those origins. Hi, this uh, is Kent as a contributor. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah you go ahead, the, please. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you uh, can go ahead. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to respond to um, Jason's comment. Actually, both comments. Um, so, the um, for the origin equal system uh, when when copy pasted into running, I think the idea is that uh, you know all the ancestor nodes uh, or really everything that got copied would initially have the uh, origin equal system. But then if descendant nodes were being configured, then those would be the ones that would um, have the origin equals intended. And then, uh, but then to your second point, uh, and actually the middle bullet point on this slide, I think the intention there is whether or not this work should introduce to the intended data store, like with the operational data store, an ability to, uh, you know, when you get the configuration from intended, you could actually specify a with, with origin parameter that would then annotate those values so that even when you're getting from intended, it would be visible as to whether or not those values came from system or from running. Uh, currently, of course, that's not uh, ability, the NMDA didn't allow for that. It only allowed for the with origin to the operational data store. That's all. Yeah, the, the the server must remember whether uh, a data node in intended it comes from system or from running, so so that it can make sure that this it will have no impact to operational. Those those will previously present in operational with origin ecosystem will still ecosystem, uh, so that but the, this question is should we define this already information to the clients so that can retrieve from intended. Blush, you're next in queue. So to the third bullet, uh, for us a very common use case is that people do a show all configuration, store it somewhere and then replace the full configuration back. Now, in the, such case, you need the origin ecosystem marking to be able to say that, yes, but the origin uh, marked nodes, I don't, we don't have to push back. If we would lose that because it's not there anymore, then we try to override them and that leads to problems. So yes, for the third bullet, definitely. Thank you. Yeah, okay, thank you. Go ahead, Jason. Um, I guess responding both to to Kent and to Balash. Um, so Balash, if if someone um, does a read back from intended or operational, and they have not explicitly declared system configuration in the running, 
then it would it would report those system configuration items as origin system. I'm only advocating that if an operator explicitly declares um, system configuration themselves in the running, that it should be considered with an origin the same as any other config that the client does in running. I think it would be odd that you could read the running, uh, see certain statements in there, then you read uh, operational, and some of the statements from running have a different origin than other statements in running. So I'm, I'm still of the opinion that anything you kind of, um, anything you declare in running that overrides system, in my opinion, that that is considered just like any other client config, um, and would should be reported as that as that origin. Um, when when a client declares something in the running, in order to make offline validation work, they don't have to copy the entire object and all its descendant leafs. They just have to copy basically the the list entry and its key to resolve the leaf ref to make it operate um, to make it um, valid all the rest of the descendant nodes in that object for example that interface could stay declared by system um, they don't have to be copied into running go ahead Jan. Yeah, my main concern here is that uh, we are redefining 795th and 8342 and in a sort of highly incompatible way, and I'm not very favorable with that. But I agree very much with the intents of this work. I think system config is important, and we can do things there. But maybe we should try to reverse the, the flags, like with system should maybe perhaps be without system instead, so that if you don't specify any flag, everything works as normal. And then if you're if your client is capable of, of seeing things that are well, sort of leaf refs pointing to things that don't exist in running, uh, then you specify this without system, and then you can deal with that. So I just want everything to work as normal as long as you don't specify anything special. Contributor. Um, so first, I think actually the with system gives you the normal behavior by default, but we should double check that. Um, to Jason's point, uh, the comment or the in parentheses at the bottom of that previous slide it said uh, much like the default flag in um, the with defaults RFC uh, in the sense that uh, for those servers that had the explicit mode um, you know the default flag is there so that the server can know for sure that like the client was configuring back into running the default value if the client negated or neglected to specify the default annotation then the server would say, oh, even though this value is the same value as the default, the server is explicitly configuring it. So that exact same behavior, I think, is what we'd want to carry over into this system uh, idea um, for yes, those. But it's... Maybe we need to have something like um, system modes. If there's, you know, with default modes, maybe there's like with system modes. And so the server can advertise its behavior in that regard. Uh, and then, sorry, uh, my second point is, is that uh, actually I think uh, the first open issue, which is the on screen now, is probably the more important one to be focusing on is the extent of backwards compatibility. Uh, it, it, right now, I think it, this work is teetering on needing something like Yang Next or NetConf Next, RestConf Next, and you know, do, or or if you know, we could structure it in one way that it doesn't, uh, you know, because it could be the case that. A legacy client, a client that's not aware of the ability to process system information, will be suddenly very surprised if it, you know, does a get um, uh, on running and it and some extra annotations appear, uh, such as the origin equals system uh, by default. Um, they may not know how to process that. So I, I guess we just have to work through that detail. Yeah, and, I, and we really have to take more discussion, at least on this, uh, to the list. If you could wrap up your presentation so that we have time for the next slot, please. Yeah, there is, I, I believe uh, we have already discussed the issues all and I have already wrapped up. I'm happy okay, to great. ship the issues to the list, yeah. Yes, please, uh, really good discussion. I'd like to continue. If uh, we get enough intensity and interest, we can always hold a, a 
another interim. And with that, uh, moving on. Okay, thank you. Uh, Oscar, can you, uh, uh, there you go. Uh, let me see. Uh, sure. Yeah. yeah, looks good. Thank you. Continue. Oh, okay. I hope that you can hear me good. So thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to present this, uh, this work on the extensions of the ACLs. Okay, so here we are on behalf of my co-authors, also from from Telefonica and from and from Orange. So the uh, the idea the idea of the or the motivation of of this draft is uh, that we took as a starting point the ACL Young model that is defined in NetMod precisely in 8519, and uh, that uh, that Young model targets the configuration of the forwarding behavior in a device, okay, so you can create these, these filters. Okay, so this model, you can create uh, the entries, so these ACAs, the matches, and the actions, okay? So in, to that point, everything so good so far. And we have been doing some work internally in the, in both in Telefonic and Orange, compiling the operational experiences of, uh, of the use of the, of the ACLs in live deployments and uh, trying to see if we can uh, do everything using this, uh, this young model. And uh, we have documented uh, here in the, in the draft that we are presenting a set of improvements that, uh, that we think are necessary uh, to the ACL model. Okay, and what we would like today, as we'll see at the end, is to discuss with you the, the approach of doing those those extensions. So the, um, the current young module defined in the in RFC 519 is prepared is already prepared to have some augmentations. Okay, so it's uh, been prepared to be to be extended. However, uh, because of its design, there are a set of limitations that uh, it makes it complicated to do all the improvements via augmentation okay so in order to do some of the, uh, the improvements we will need to do some uh, redefinition of the of some things so here is the um, the list of the um, of the functional uh, of this this enhancement and functional gaps uh, and classified by what is the the problematic that we have that we have found and they are documented in the draft so on the one hand, some that leads to some suboptimal configuration. So one of them is the lack of manipulating a list of prefixes. Okay, so um, typically you need to, uh, you can only do one prefix at a time in one entry. Okay, so you will have to uh, duplicate many entries to create that. Uh, for manageability, also uh, you cannot create or define uh, aliases or or sets, uh, for example, as we will see, prefix is a very common fu uh, functionality that we that we require. And then, functional-wise, um, we lack uh, the handling fragments of IP4, so we can discard, for example, uh, fragments. Okay. Uh, also, the the handling of TCP flags is uh, suboptimal. For example, uh, it does not support all the matching. Uh, as for example, it is uh, supported in BGP flow spec. Okay, so uh, we'll see that we could, uh, for example, do some bit, uh, some mask to be able to filter several, several the flags. Also, in in the actions, and right now you can accept and discard or either silently or or not. Um, but uh, for example, you could also have uh, rate limited actions. Also, you could perform a payload based based filtering. Uh, also, separately, the couple from this functionality of the of the model, the current model is a device model. Okay, so it's intended that you have a device that has the um, that you program there, the ACL. But we can also uh, use it at a at a network level. Okay, to uh, manage the the ACLs in a network. For example, if you want to uh, to configure the uh, the perimeter security of the network and you uh, you manage all the filters uh, in a in a central way. So then you would require also to extend the model to be able to uh, to use it in a network and maybe bind the say which ACL applies 
to a to a device okay and also you could be able to reuse the acl and the content of the acl for example, a template or the sets across regular devices for example the prefix list that you de that you define is a prefix list you can you can use in multiple devices and you can define it uh, once at network level and being able to applied in several devices okay so we'll go which is of the the problem so the first one uh, that we mentioned is the the not that we currently don't have a possibility to work with list of prefixes okay so so now you can only say which is the destination ipv4 or the destination ipv6 or the source uh, and ipv4 or ipv6 uh, however uh, when we want to, for example, mitigate DDoS attacks, uh, we need to uh, provide a, a big list of uh, addresses. And even if we need want to do the combination of uh, sources and destinations, even it, it makes uh, worse, the problem multiplies. Okay, so then if we want to create those rules today, we would require uh, N multiplied by M entries. Okay, so instead of creating a single a single entry okay so this is how uh, uh, with the old one just to create the destination and source uh, in into separate entries and you could combine them in a in a single one just uh, by allowing uh, changing this to to allow a list also the um, we, uh, how we've seen that operators work is typically uh, the network operators maintain a uh, prefix list okay to to use in acls okay and also uh, it is very common that the department that is manipulating this prefix list is a separate department so it's typically a security department or uh, in the case of business customer even is the it can be the uh, part of the business department that maintains their own list of uh, of acl so typically they are people like to maintain one list okay with some naming and all the addresses addresses there so that the management is separate okay so so we think it's it's good to be able to have those 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 lists okay so for example the the routing policies already have the notion of sets and the particular the prefix sets in that case it's prefix run sets even they call it uh, prefix sets Okay. So, and also we can generalize this concept also to have uh, aliases or, or defined sets. Okay, so we can have these reusable definitions that you can use across multiple ACLs, and you can have, for example, these prefix, these prefix sets or prefix list where you have all these IPv4 or IPv6 prefixes, the protocol sets or port number sets. You define that in the, the set of the set of ports to, to reuse, or even ICM, uh, ICMP sets where you can uh, uh, filter the type or, or or, or the code and you can uh, have them already predefined and, and reuse them uh, also another um, another thing that we that mentioned is the the handling of of flags so even the acl is applied locally uh, is typical and sometimes is triggered by by other tools for example the bgp flow as, as mentioned before is one of the one of the possibilities and the we cannot easily map all the all the filtering rules and in particular uh, one of the things that we uh, uh, we cannot do is the currently handle all the tcp flags in the in the current draft you can uh, have a um, select one flag today or one 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 uh, one bit of the tcp flag but you for example cannot uh, create a, a mask to match of the several TCP TCP flags. Okay. So um, what I uh, what I wanted to ask the, the working group today is several questions. First of all, I mean these are the or we are willing to work on on the extensions necessary uh, to to fill this this gaps. But uh, we need some guidance from the working group, especially that uh, the starting point is an existing RFC. Okay, so so what are the uh, so we want to ask the working group what is the best suggestion to, uh, to approach the engagement? So either we have an, a new version of the ACL model, so it's version whatever or an RFC bis or whatever way we can minimize the non barwas compatible changes. There, there will be some non, non there will be some changes that break existing structure, but minimizing them. Either we could uh, augment 
eh, de existing young module, not touch everything that is there, but only uh, if we need to add things, we add everything on, on top. In some cases, it will mean uh, having to structure a little bit similar, but with more capabilities. And also, uh, for sure, open to, to any question, to open to, to opinions here. And also the, the differentiation between the network model and the device model is, okay, uh, do we create a separate module for the network module? Because um, we might need one like that is uh, extending, for example, the ITF network, and then we plug there the, the sets and the, uh, and the ACL templates on, on top of it. And uh, if we go for that, having a separate module for the network-wide module of ACLs and sets, is that module to be work also here in net mode or uh, everywhere? So here, um, any feedback from feedback on this is is appreciated. So thank you. So Jason, thank you. Um, yeah, I guess uh, just about how to approach the work. Um, it might need more discussion on the mailing list to see how the scope of the work evolves and how much functionality is being added and how backwards compatible it is. But um, you might, my, my initial gut is that it would probably be a, a separate RFC that augments um, you know, with, with extended uh, uh, extra functionality. Um, uh, just as a as a as a first cut from from what I'm seeing from this um, about the network versus device model, I guess I had a question. When you say device, uh, like a net, uh, so there's per interface ACLs, and then you have this kind of device or network ACL. Is the intention that that's that's an ACL that is effectively applied to traffic coming in on any interface? It's no, just kind no. of like. Well, <laughs> Uh, no, uh, regarding the, se the second question of the network, no, the, the idea is to be able to uh, manage uh, ACLs that, uh, or, or sets or prefix lists that are used in several devices, okay, so that you can have, uh, uh, for example, a, a template, an ACL template, and that ACL template, if you want to replicate it in several devices, okay, from, a, for example, from a controller, that you can, uh, that you can reuse it easily. So it's something to facilitate the management of ACLs and prefix lists from a central location. For example, especially for the prefix list, uh, taking into account that uh, they, uh, if you define in the operator, you define some deny list for some service, uh, this is independent on the device that you are, you are running it. So you will define it once. Uh, and then you will say, okay, this applies in this device, this device, and this device, okay? Uh, from a control perspective, then you will download that con the specific configuration to the device. But the network model is, uh, when I refer to network, is that applies to several devices, okay? That was the, uh, and to be able to help in managing several devices at the same time. Okay, it looks like Jason doesn't have anything more there. Uh, so in, in general, uh, it's a judgment call of whether you augment or revise, right? And uh, <laughs> you really have to get into some of the details to figure that out. Um, mm -hmm. And then when we start getting into the details, we'll also figure out what the details are of device relative to network. And if there's a, a mo existing model you're augmenting, all, all of those, getting to those details will help you answer the questions on your slide. Right now you just have you know, an empty section. So it's a little hard to evaluate or give you a definitive answer. But, you know, as a general rule, if you can, uh, it's a judgment call, but if you can augment um, and you're adding optional capability, augment is the way to, as a separate RFC is definitely the way to go. If you are looking for um, revising the core behavior that everyone needs to adhere to, then you definitely want to revise, you know, do a BIS uh, or a placement mod uh, model. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I think we need to get to the details. And yep. uh, uh, the the motivation that you've given here is just right for the presentation. I think for the draft, rather than focus on motivation, focus on what you're actually going to do. So focus on the new capabilities you're defining in the draft, describe them, and then throw out some proposals, some details, 
and then we can really jump in to, to asking this question. So, you know, from if, I, uh, I I don't think you know we haven't heard anyone jump in and say you know this is completely wrong. Uh, <laughs> head down. What we've heard is is uh, you know um, looking at uh, you know the best way to do it. Um, but again, having details will help us understand, help the working group judge whether it's something that they want to a support and b what's the best best mechanism to implement it. Okay, so we can update the the draft with uh, with a we can go in the we can propose in the drive that if you want the two directions, okay, one uh, that implies breaking a little bit what was there and the one that would augment. So in some cases we have found that we need to break a little bit what was was there, okay? So but in any case we can we can do that. We can prepare a new version of the draft with some of these of these details and then um, have the conversation to decide. Thank you. Uh, that's great. Thank you. Uh, Jason's in queue. We're a little over time, but Jason, you can have the uh, last word. Just a really quick question. Um, is there is any of the functionality you're proposing here mean stateful firewall behavior? Is it all stateless? Uh, so far, it's all stateless. We were not considering it stateful so far. So it's all, all rules, no... follow the same approach. Uh, it's only enhancements over what was there. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you for the presentation. Look forward to seeing the next revision as well as future discussion on the list. Uh, with that, we're actually uh, out of time. And uh, thank you all for participating in this meeting. Look forward to possibly seeing some people in person uh, the, the next meeting. There's you know, rumors that that might be hybrid. So uh, thank you all uh, for contributing. Yes.